You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I wish I could stay, but I got, I got to teach. All right. Thank you, though. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, lesson 22 that's here. I know it's little numbers are kind of off there, but it, it fits nicely in what we are doing here. So again, we are continuing the theme of writing out our equations and then solving them there, not just simply trying to use number sense and piece things together. So we're really formalizing how we're writing mathematically here. So, all right, um, here we go. Yoshiro's new puppy, all right? Um, Yoshiro has a new puppy. She decided to create an enclosure. So um, a crate, a lot of times, is just, um, we, you can think of like a cage kind of, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to have a ceiling to it there. Um, it's more of an enclosure for a puppy in her backyard. The enclosure is in the shape of a hexagon, okay? Let me start there. Hexagon, six sides, all right? With one pair of opposite sides running the same distance along the length of two parallel flower beds, okay? There are two boundaries at one end of the flower beds that are 10 feet and 12 feet respectively, and at the other end, the two boundaries are 15 and 20, respectively. All right, if the perimeter is... Okay, so um, they are telling us here, we'll go back here, and this is what you're going to see a lot of times. It's the first time you're reading, maybe get something down, but it's not until you go through it the second, the third time, you really start putting things together. And here's one thing, one pair of opposite sides running the same distance. Okay, I, I don't know what it is, but I know that they are the same. Ta-da! All right. There are two boundaries at one end of the flower beds that are 10 and 12. Okay. And at the other end, the two boundaries are 15 and 20. Okay. All right. Perimeter is 137. What's the length of each side that runs along the flower bed? All right. So the idea here is, is let's get things figured out. I know it's the six sides. So again, if we're being very visual here, um, you know, I've got the one side plus the two sides plus the three sides, but nah, all right. I've got the information that's here. I know it's a 10 plus a 12 plus a 15 plus a 20 and then plus an X and an X. And I know all of that has to add up to the 137. All right. So that's the six sides. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So... Now that we've got our equation down, we're just going to clean things up. So we're going to simplify first. We're always looking to simplify after we write something out. So I've got 22, uh, 32, 37. I got 57. All right. 57 we added up. X plus X is a 2X. And all of that has to equal the 137. So again, this is what we are after really here, your equation. So you should feel like at this stage of the game, now becomes the basic part. This is the, all right, solving our two steps. So let's subtract the 57 from both sides. So we've got 2x equals 80. Divide both sides by 2. So we get x equals 40. All right. So yeah, each of those would be 40. And so sure enough, if I plug everything back in and I add it all up, I should get that 140. 37. All right, let's try another one here. Swim practice. Jenny is on the local swim team for the summer and has swim practice four days per week. The schedule is the same each day. The, sw the team swims in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Okay, again, for two hours in the evening. If she swims 12 hours per week, how long does she swim each morning? Okay, so this is something where we want to start to realize as our distributed property. And because it's four days per week and each day is the same. So what that tells me is, is I can just multiply it by a four because it is going to repeat. Now, again, if I'm going visually here, I've got this, swims in the morning, I don't know, and then again, two hours in the evening. Um, I do know that she's doing that for four times. Sorry, it took me a while to write that all out. The visual does take a little bit of time, but if it works for you, use it, people. And then here's the whole idea is, oh, there's, there's four of them. It repeats. So four times x plus two. 
All right. And, and what we're going to find here is it's, it is the same thing as just combining our like terms. This is just a little bit faster. Um, we do know that it's the 12 hours per week. And again, it's the 12 hours per the week. It's four days per week. That's how much swims. Just because we see week, don't throw that seven that's out there. All right, so um, yeah, 4x plus 8. And sure enough, if you combine all of your x's, you're going to get 4x. If you combine your 2's, you're going to get an 8 that's there. So either one of those, hey, that says you know what's going on regarding your equations. All right, uh, 4x equals 4. Divide by 4, hey, x equals 1. So it's that one hour that we're looking at. Uh, again, I, I get some of you might be like, come on, I was able to come up with that without the equation. Right, but we gave you a nice clean number. What if it ends up coming out to be, uh, you know, something like 38 minutes, um, and that would have to be written as a fraction. So it, anyway, again, technique here, people. Technique is what we're working on here. All right. Um, but da -da 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 who else do we want to jump at here? All right, here we go. Let's look at question number five. Ben's family left for a vacation. His dad came home from work on Friday. The entire trip was 600 miles. Dad was very tired after working a long day and decided to stop and spend the night in a hotel after four hours of driving. If it's just four hours, maybe we shouldn't have even left then. I don't know. Hey, but if it breaks up the trip, who am I to say? The next morning, Dad drove the remainder of the trip. If the average speed of the car was 60 miles per hour, what was the remaining time left to drive on the second part of the trip? Okay, remember distance is rate multiplied by time. All right, so sometimes we've got to do a little bit off to the side to get to our equation. So, all right, the entire trip was 600 miles. So, all right, I know all of that is the 600 miles. Um, Dad was very tired after working a long day, decided to stop and spend the night after four hours of driving. Okay, four hours. Um, I guess I could put that part here, but I don't know what that's going to do quite yet. And again, this is what we want you to see. I want you to take you through the thought process. The next morning, drove the remainder of the trip. If the average speed of the car was 60 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. So 60, okay, times the X will get me the number of miles that are there. So if it was five hours, it would be 60 times five. Um, if it was 7, it would be 60 times 7 for the hours. What was the remaining time left to drive? Okay, so here we go, people. This is why we write things out, because it's like at first we're like, I don't know where to go with this, but now I can see my equation. The 4 hours plus the 60 times the x, because x is representing hours here, has to result in the 6 hundred that we're looking at here. All right. Visual in action, people. Um, so, all right. So let's just kind of make sure, because this is where we want the answer to make sense. If I subtract the four, now here's the problem. Hmm. That four, that four was four hours. That's 600? That's 600 miles. All right. So, okay. Wait a second. Go backwards. The average speed of the car was 60 miles per hour. Okay, so even though it's the four hours, I do need to times it by the 60 because it's 60 miles per. So really, even though it's four hours, it's really 240. Remember, 60 times four, hello, 240. So it's not just a four, it's 240 because it's in miles. So again, we gotta see if things make sense. Now I can subtract my 240 from each side. Let's see here. 60x equals 360. Divide by 60. And we're getting x equals 6 for 6 more hours. All right. Now that makes sense why he got started and he stopped there. Broke up the trip. That's there. 10 hours in the car is a while, people. All right. Hope it was worth it. Anyway, so yeah, that's normal, people. I do want you to keep in mind a lot of times we think we should just write the equation, solve it, and be done. A lot of times you're going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But this is why we write things down and visually we get our approach that we're looking at. All right. So, um, yeah, that was good, people. That was good. That's a good one to finish on there. Um, I've got to get back to my discussion anyway. I've got people that are still here. They want to hear more from my presentation. But just keep in mind, people, always making time for you. We'll see you later.